What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and this video idea was requested by my good buddy Zade. So shout out to him for making this video happen and he recommend how I would make the third MCU Spider-Man film. Now this isn't really a how I would have made it, it's more a how I would make it because I'm basically doing a film that's been confirmed and hasn't come out yet. But for this how, what, how I would have made it series is most likely to cancel comic book projects like any like a TV show, comic book TV show that was cancelled. Excuse me, a comic book TV show that was cancelled, or, a, yeah, or a comic book TV show that was, like, never made, or a cancelled comic book movie, comic book video game, um, yeah, comic book video game, or a comic book video game that was never made, that was in development, but just stopped, or a cancelled comic book movie, or a cancelled comic book movie sequel, basically those six things, so, um, I actually have a little bit of ideas for this film. Um, for this version, I'll try to say... I have four things. It, it was originally going to be five, but I'd be like, nah, I don't think the fifth one was necessary. because. So I think these four are the best. So I have... Number one is where I start the film. Number two is the villains. Three, story. And number four, drama. So we'll get to where I start the film first, but... No, 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 but... Um, so, where I start this film is, I start off how we last got, le left off in Far From Home, so, it starts, the film starts with, basically, the Far From Home end credit, and then we, ha and we actually hear Spider-Man say, what the fuck? And, that's probably the first joke I would be in this movie, and he tries to see, and the world just, like, looks at him, like, everyone's just looking at him, and he sees MJ's gone, I'm calling her MJ because... I'm not saying Michelle Jones. I keep. I'm just gonna say her name for short because I'm used to saying that now. Because everyone calls her MJ these days, even though she's not. So he goes to swing around. He tries to get away from the people. He, they're like throwing stuff at him, like garbage. It's like garbage. Anything they can find on the floor. And he's trying to get to Aunt May's house. So yeah, he's trying to get. So he's getting to Aunt May, and he goes to Queen. He goes to the place where Aunt May lives, and he sees Happy. And Aunt May trying to barricade the doors. And people around Queens are, like, throwing stuff at their house. They're, like, like um, basically vandalism. They're, like, breaking, like, the room, the garden, breaking the gnomes. <laughs> Peter tr webs up um, all the neighbors, and he's, like, saying, I'm sorry, I didn't want to do this, because they were breaking out Aunt May's house. So he gets in and tells Aunt May and Happy we need to go. And Happy says that he brought a car, and... Happy says this car can fly, so he gets um, him, Aunt May, and Peter into the car, and it starts to fly, and the people are, like, throwing stuff at it and trying to get, and a brick actually breaks one of the windows, and Happy gets on fast mode where it drives really fast, so, and, and Peter, and Happy's, like, wondering, what the hell happened, and, and he's, like, Mysterio exposed me, and, and they're both, Aunt May and P Happy are like, what? And Peter explains what happened. And Happy says that we're going to have to lay low for a while. And the screen t cuts to black. But we don't see Happy for the rest of the film. He doesn't. He, we just see him in the beginning. But most of the film, it actually takes place two months later. We see Peter Parker and Aunt May being homeless. And the world sees a Spider-Man now that he's a wanted criminal. And we actually do get a couple of cameos later in the film. Like, we get to see Sam Wilson as Captain America, Ant-Man, Wasp, Shuri, Black Panther, and Doctor Strange. Well, besides Doctor Strange, um, these five, like, like run to him. They, like, try to attack him to bring him into S.H.I.E.L.D. Because he's also wanted from S.H.I.E.L.D. Nick Fury's not there. And you're the scrolls impersonating him in a, a Maria Hill because, well... They're probably gonna be in Captain Marvel 2, so I say Captain Marvel 2 takes place two months after Far From Home. That's just me. So yeah. Um yeah, so yeah, we have we have Spider Man's like trying doesn't want to fight them, like he doesn't want to fight his friends. But like, they believe that he's actually a criminal and caused that death because they're stupid. <laughs> and 
Yeah, so Spider-Man wins the fight, so basically it's probably at one point to see, oh yeah, I'm seeing Spider-Man is strong. Like, was, I want to make this film feel like he's Spider-Man, and so yeah. Um, okay, we'll talk more about the, that's not, I'm not talking about like the fight scene. I'm kind of getting a little to number three of uh, the story, but I'll tell you the story. But I'm going to explain a few parts of the story. Like, I would have fight scenes between Spider-Man would fight Falcon, Ant-Man, the Wasp, Sherry, and Black Panther. But not Doctor Strange. We'll get into Doctor Strange when we get to number three. So, let's go on to number two, and that's the villain. So, I would have two villains in this movie. They're both new villains. Not Mysterio. I actually say, I actually believe that Mysterio, well, actually, no. I say Mysterio is actually still alive, but we don't see him in... We probably won't see him ever. I don't know if we'll ever see him ever again. Or he's actually dead. I say it'd be better if he was alive. Because that seems a lot better. It seemed, the after credits seemed a lot more sense if he was... Made, made more sense and a lot more interesting if he was actually alive. So, uh, well, he has to make the world believe he's dead. So, actually... I would have Mysterio come back in a future film, maybe. I don't know. Um, but the villains, I would have... Craven the Hunter and Felicia Hardy as Black Cat. So yeah, Black Cat would appear in the first scene where she's trying to steal something and she disables the cameras and Peter goes in as Spider-Man and we can see that Spider-Man suit's a little dirty and messed up. Like it's a little bit smelly, like it's a little smelly. It smells homeless. Like you can see like there are stains on there. Like he hasn't washed the suit or wash the suit or he hasn't taken a shower in months, two months. So he kind of smells. So he goes to stop Black Cat, and when they have a fight scene, kind of like in that spectacular Spider-Man TV show. It was kind of like that, except she's not stealing the black suit. This is take place in a bank. Well, no, a museum, actually. I like that more. A museum. So, and when the cameras, cameras turn back on, Spider-Man's caught leaving, so people think that Spider-Man did it, and J. 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 Jameson says that he's putting a bounty on Spider-Man's head, and... Random people, if they see Spider-Man, they'll, like, kill him. Or Peter Parker. So, yeah. So, yeah. And for Craven the Hunter, he sees this. Well, no, no. Someone tells him about it in South America. And he decides to go to North America and hunt down this Spider-Man. So, yeah. Craven the Hunter is the main villain. Black Cat is the villain. Uh, well, they're both the villains, but they don't work together. Um. Black Cat help learn to try to learn more about this Craven guy during the film, and in the at the in the beginning of the third act, she well middle close to the end of the third act, they work Spider Man and her work together. So, so yeah. So now for story is this is gonna be more about Peter Parker actually becoming actually Spider Man. He's not gonna be Iron Boy. You might as well say, oh, but Spider Man was trying not to be Iron Man in Far From Home. No, he wasn't. He was basically Iron Boy in that film as well. Like he made most of his stuff. He was and was also he was also Iron Boy in that movie. He was an Iron Boy, Iron Boy in pretty much every of the MCU movies besides Phil, Civil War. I'd say that's the only time he was not Iron Boy. That all started when Homecoming came out. So I say this is when he starts to become really Spider Man and actually learns to grow. Like he actually grows up. I have this film grow up, and I bring Uncle Ben this film. I have flashbacks of Uncle Ben where we get to the scene with Doctor Strange. Like Peter, he asks Peter, like, like, um, like one line Peter says that everything went to hell since Stark died, and Doctor Strange wants to wonder why does Stark mean so much to you, and why didn't you, why haven't you told anyone about this? Not even your aunt. And Peter says that because he felt like Uncle Ben was still there. So Tony Stark felt like. Uncle Ben was still there. Like, he was still there. Like, he felt like Uncle Ben was with him. And when Tony sacrificed himself, he felt like he lost Uncle Ben again. Yeah, so that's how I do it. And we also get flashbacks of Uncle Ben. And Corrin is lying with great power comes great responsibility. And, and Peter's like, I basically... Like, Peter's, like, ashamed of what he's become. And, like, yeah, I have a scene where Peter is ashamed of what he's become because... Throughout years, when I first, when he first became Spider-Man, before he had the Iron Spice, the Iron, before he had the suit Iron Man gave him, he learned with great power comes great responsibility. But after that, everything changed. So yeah, basically Peter, this this didn't listen to Uncle Ben. With great, he didn't listen to the words with great power comes great responsibility. And the film, he learns to grow. He learns to learn that. So 
that's basically what the story is about. Him learning to know with great power comes great responsibility, and him learning to actually be a hero and his own hero. So, now for number four is the drama. Um, the drama I would have one with Michelle Jones. Hey, I said Michelle Jones. Michelle Jones now instead of MJ. So. The first one is, and there's only one scene with Michelle Jones, and we'll never see her again in this MCU series. This is going to be the last one with her. She decides to move away from the place she wants called home. She's moving away from America and going to California. She says that she can never be with Peter anymore, be with Peter, because she's going to put, she says, like, you're going to put all of our lives in danger, the people who are close to you, and we can't be friends anymore, Peter. So, basically, she leaves, not even say goodbye to Peter, and... She leaves. She's gone. Same with Ned. Well, Ned still stays, but he's like, he calls Peter saying, well, he talks to Peter in person saying, like, I don't want to be your friend anymore, Peter. Like, he says the same stuff Michelle said, like, you're going to put us in danger. Like, basically, all of his friends leave him. He's, Peter's all alone, and all he has is Aunt May. And for one scene for Flash Thompson, he doesn't say this to Peter, but I have a little small cameo for him saying, like, he's doing a live stream because that's what he does now. Um, he says, like, he can't believe that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, the kid he always teased and messed with. And, uh, yeah, basically the kid he always teased and messed with is his hero. Like, he says, like, oh, I feel ashamed. And, yeah, so, basically all Peter has left is Aunt May. He did. Um, but, he, but, um, so, yeah. Basically, he has Aunt May. But in the end of the film, he has another new friend, Black Felicia Hardy and Black Cat. So, they're friends, and they kind of... Well, in the film, we start... We, well, we, I wouldn't say they are starting to get to love each other, because this may be the first time interacting on the big screen. If this film actually... If this idea actually has to, happens to be made, which probably won't. Um, but... Yeah, I would have probably, um... Black... No, yeah, Black... I probably have Black Cat flirt with Spider Man, but Peter's like, oh, I'm not interesting. Interest, interested. So basically, Peter. So basically, Peter now has two people who care about him: Aunt May and Black Cat, Felicia Hardy. And in this film, Peter. People still believe that Spider Man's a menace, and he, Black Cat tells him, "What are you gonna do?" And he says, "Like, I'll keep find. I'll keep going until I find Mysterio." And to make people know that he set this all up. So basically, we don't get a final swing. We don't get a happy ending. Basically, we get an ending. Well, I want to say ha we sort of get a happy ending, but not one for Peter. Like, him and Aunt May just keep going on the run. Basically, that's how it ends in the film. They just keep going. They keep, they're on the run. And Bla as Peter said, he'll see Black Hat again once this is all over. So basically, it's leading to a fourth film with... I say Mysterio, Vulture, Mysterio, Vulture, Shocker, and Scorpion. No, not Scorpion, maybe. I'll have, maybe, okay, maybe Scorpion, and I, no, no, I think Vulture, Mysterio, and Morbius, in case that Morbius movie is going to be connected to the MCU. So basically, three villains for the next film. So yeah, I know it's not the best, excuse me, I know it's not the best Spider-Man story for a movie, but... I think this is the best Spider-Man story for the MCU, like the best MCU version Spider-Man film. Like, let me know. Do you guys think it's the best MCU Spider-Man film if this ever happened, or do you think, oh no, the ones that end up getting made were actually better, or do you think, oh no, the Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home sucked. I like this version more. This should have been Spider-Man in the MCU, because I think I would I like this version more. I think this is what Spider-Man should have been in the MCU. Well, not really, but this is basically me how, how I'd fix him in the MCU. I think this is better like this. Like, he never really learned with great power comes great responsibility until when Iron Man came in his life. So, basically, he's starting to grow, and he starts to remember with great power comes great responsibility. That's basically what this film was about. He's remembering of who he really is, not just an Iron Man sidekick. He's a, he's a kid with a good heart. That's basically what Spider-Man is, a kid with a good heart. So, yeah, that's how it'd be the film. So, for me, I'd probably give this film an 8. If, or a 9. <laughs> I know it's basically my own, basically me talking about my own thing, but I do this a lot. But I think I would have liked this a lot. 
Yes, but that's probably not what we're gonna get. Um, but I hope they do something interesting with the live action. Well, not. Wait, why did I say live action? Um, with the Spider Man identity reveal for the world. I hope it's not played off as a joke. I hope it's actually taken seriously and it's a big deal in the next film because I want to see what happens. This basically think it's basically also how I predict what's gonna happen. So basically that's why I had these ideas. Well, someone else made a video of how they would make the third Spider Man film. Um, and I like their idea better. I don't remember the channel name, but their idea was a lot better. For their film, they had the chameleon as the villain, but for this, I wanted Craven the Hunter. Basically, I would like to see their version more than mine, but I would still love to see if my version gets some inspiration. But I bet Disney's not going to be like that. But I'd love to see if this ever happened, because I would have loved if this was an actual film. But I think this would have been good. So, yeah. Let me know what you think of it, and I'm out. Excelsior.